Hi guys. It is a gloomy, soon to be rainy day here uh, in Girl Scout cookie time uh, here in Paradise in Garfield, Texas. And I am uh, have got to get back out to tackling the Amazon rainforest in my backyard before the monsoons hit here in Garfield. But uh, the here on Saturday morning, March 23rd, 2019. But uh, before the rains hit here, we are going to dive into today's Chronicle of the Collapse. And I want to thank Alert Tribes member Kakik. Is that how you pronounce K A K I K? Anyway, thank you, brother Kakik for sending me this story. You know, there have been a million stories on uh, the mainstream media about this flooding going on uh, a little bit north of Texas. And I, I was just having an, in an interview with the uh, Natural Progressive. Uh, you might want to go over to her channel, The Natural Progressive, and listen to my interview. But we were talking about she was, uh, Chris was mentioning in that story about how no one on the mainstream media is connecting the dots between uh, what's going on up in the Midwest and the knock-on effects of food production. But uh, Kakik has moved off the mainstream media to actually a, a kind of conservative blog uh, called End of the American Dream. Life as you have known it will never be the same again. And this is uh, a blog by a fellow named Michael Snyder. And we need to have Michael on the show. But uh, let's get a taste of what's on Michael Snyder's mind. How is he reading what's going on in how is he reading between the lines of the mainstream media? Take it away, Michael Snyder. Catastrophic flooding in the Midwest could last for months, and that is going to mean a dramatic drop in U.S. food production. <clears throat> and I'm going to put the link to this article on here. I might not have time to finish it. Uh, I'm just going to, this is a long involved story. Uh, I encourage you to go read it yourself and check out some other of Michael's work. <clears throat> the worst flooding disaster in the history of the Midwest is just getting started. And as this crisis unfolds, we are all going to be feeling the pain. The bomb cyclone that recently brought hurricane force winds and blizzard conditions to the middle of the nation was the spark that set off this catastrophic flooding. And now all of the snow from one of the snowiest winters in decades is going to be feeding into rivers that have already shattered all-time flood records. As you will see below, most of the Great Plains and Upper Midwest is currently covered by more than 10 inches of snow, and all of that water has to go somewhere. As all of that snow melts, we are going to witness an agricultural disaster that is far beyond anything that we have ever seen before in modern American history. So we shall see. Let's all uh, watch the watch the news to see if Michael is right and uh, I don't know whether he's right or not. I don't make predictions uh, here on this channel like that. I have learned not to do that but this is Michael's rant not mine. If you think that I am exaggerating even a little bit please read this article all the way to the end well, I'm not sure I'm going to make it to the end, but we're going to give uh, Michael a good run for his money. As I did research for this article, I was floored by the immense devastation that has already taken place. But 
if the crisis were over, at least farmers could start picking up the pieces. Unfortunately, the crisis is not over. In fact, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds is saying that we are, quote, just getting started. The following comes from a USA Today article entitled, quote, it looked like an ocean. Severe Midwest flooding could last all spring. Uh, Governor Kim Reynolds is warning Iowans that millions Iowans, what millions of Midwesterners have come to understand in recent days, the severe flooding that has swamped much of the region may be a long way from over. Reynolds said that the snow melt and spring rains could create additional flooding in the weeks ahead because of compromised levees. Quoting Reynolds, we are in for the long haul. We're just getting started. It looks like an ocean, close quote. The Iowa Ocean, yes. This was one of the worst winters for the middle part of the country that we have seen in ages, and now we are entering melting season. According to Bloomberg, the amount of snow currently covering the upper Midwest and Great Plains is absolutely staggering. Quoting Bloomberg, at least 91% of the upper Midwest and Great Plains is snow covered to an average depth of 10.7 inches, according to the U.S. National Operational Hydrologic Remote Sensing Center which tracks snow nationwide, uh, blah, blah, blah. So, what is going to happen when all of that snow melts and starts pouring into the major rivers? Needless to say, this is beyond a worst-case scenario for countless numbers of Midwest farmers. I am going to share with you some excerpts from mainstream news reports about the devastation that we have already witnessed. After reading each excerpt carefully, I think that you will agree with me that we are literally facing a national food production nightmare. At this moment, millions of acres of farmland are underwater, and that is not going to change anytime soon. When the floodwaters came, they moved so rapidly that they literally picked up pigs and baby calves and carried them along. Roads, rail lines, and entire small towns have been washed away, and so even if farmers had something left to sell, they couldn't get it to market Anyway, I was just uh, looking at the mainstream media news talking about uh, the ethanol, uh, the damage to the ethanol crop uh, going on and talking about how rail lines have been washed out, that there's no way that the, they can move the corn. Okay, speaking of which which is the big, the real story. We have also witnessed the loss of massive stockpiles of wheat, corn, and soybeans that had already been harvested. The following uh, comes from Reuters News. According to Reuters uh, coverage of this, quote, as river levels rose, spilling over levees and swallowing up townships, farmers watched helplessly as the waters consumed not only their fields, but their stockpiles of grain, the one thing that can stand between farmers and financial ruin. This is farmer Tom Griesler from Winslow, Nebraska, who lost two full storage bins of his corn. Quote, 
I have never seen anything like this in my life. We had been depending on that income from our livestock, but now all of our feed is gone. So, what, so that is going to be even more difficult. We haven't been making any money from our grain farming because of trade issues and low prices, close quote. So now the farmers have no feed to feed their livestock. Uh, according to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, flood-soaked wheat, corn, and soybeans are considered to be adulterated and therefore must be destroyed. And thanks to the ongoing trade war with China, farmers had a staggering amount of wheat, corn, and store beans stored, stored on their farms right now. And then quoting U.S. Department of Agriculture data, quote, as of December 1st, producers in states with flooding, including South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, Wisconsin, and Illinois had 6.75 billion bushels of corn, soybeans, and wheat stored on their farms. 38% of the total U.S. supplies available at that time. Are you starting to get the picture? In one county alone, more than a million bushels of corn are sitting under the floodwaters at this moment. And I'm not sure. He has links to all of these different uh, news stories and agricultural reports. You have to go on this link if you want to dig deeper into this. So I'm not sure what state Fremont County is in uh, in this quote. Fremont County farmers estimate about 390,000 bushels of stored soybeans and about 1.2 million bushels of stored corn are under water. And Jorgensen said more of last year's grain was being swallowed up as the Missouri River crest. At local cash prices <coughs> for corn and soybean, that is about $7.3 million farmers may be unable to replace. And that is just one county. Getting back to Michael, ladies and gentlemen, food prices are about to start soaring in a major way. There has not been such a massive blow to U.S. food production in my entire lifetime. For many farmers, this truly is the end of the line. One of the farmers that has reached his breaking point is 23-year-old Clint Pichel from Neobrara, Nebraska. And then he links you to the article with this quote. Quote, when you're losing money to start with, how do you take on extra losses? Asked Clint, whose lowland fields were flooded by the ice-filled Neobrara River after a dam failed. He spent Monday gathering 30 dead baby calves from his family's ranch in this northern region of the state, finding their bodies under huge chunks of ice. Back to Michael. Can you imagine losing 30 baby calves and not being able to do anything about it? But Doug and Eric Albert were hit even harder. They lost nearly 700 animals to the floodwaters. And then he links you over 
to this article, Doug and Eric Alberts are, are trying to round up their surviving hogs on their nine-acre farm in Fremont, Nebraska. There aren't many. The family le estimates they were only able to save 14 out of 700 of their livestock. The father and son have worked for three years to build this business. Then a few days ago, the, the water came. Doug recalled, quote, about a three-foot wall, 100 feet wide, just came flowing over the road. Within minutes, seven feet of water covered their farm. Back to Michael. Even before the flooding, farm bankruptcies had hit the highest level since the Great Recession, and now those numbers are going to explode much, much higher. In addition to everything else, all of this flooding is causing massive topsoil erosion. We had already lost over half our topsoil, and we are not too far from an apocalyptic situation. Then he quote, then he leads you off to this other article. Severe winter and spring floods take another toll that is much more difficult to quantify soil loss on a grand scale right in the region that provides a huge amount of our food supply. The Midwest boasts one of the globe's greatest stores of topsoil, more than half of which has already been lost in the past 50 years. Topsoil is that fragile, slow to regenerate resource that drives agriculture, as University of Washington ecologist David Montgomery explained in his 2007 book, Dirt, the Erosion of Civilizations, quote, with just a couple feet of soil standing between prosperity and desolation, civilizations that plow through their soil vanish, close quote. Getting back to Michael, I wish that I could accurately convey the seriousness of what we are facing. Food production in the United States is going to be way, way down this year. Prices at the grocery store are immediately going to start rising, and they are going to keep rising all year long. So, now is the best time to stock up and get prepared for what is coming. Our bread basket has been absolutely devastated, and things are only going to get worse. The mainstream media seems to think that this is just another in a long string of major natural disasters that has hit our nation in recent years, but the truth is not so simple. This disaster is going to have a dramatic impact on our ability to grow our own food. And even if everything went perfectly from this point forward, we are talking about a recovery that would take many, many years. As I conclude this article, I would like to share with you an extended excerpt from something that was posted on Facebook. Uh, and you, and I'm not going to get in. If you want to see this extended post, you should. You need to go on this link. Uh, but we're going to let Michael wrap up here. The new normal along the Mississippi River, the Missouri River, and other major rivers in the middle part of the country is going to mean much much higher prices at the grocery store. 
These days, a full cart of groceries can easily run $200 or more. So how bad will things ultimately get as this crisis continues to unfold? We are facing something that we have never faced before, and nobody is quite sure what is going to happen next. And if you're wondering who Michael Snyder is, he is the author of four books, including Get Prepared Now, The Beginning of the End, and Living a Life That Really Matters, otherwise known as uh, getting <clears throat> out, out there and enjoying it while you still can. Um, uh, and his articles appear in the Economic Collapse blog and this blog, The End of the American Dream. Yes, and uh, we will have to get Michael, who is a self-proclaimed, self-proclaimed, uh, conservative Christian commentator. So, uh, anyway, with that said, I need to wrap up today's chronicle of the collapse as the rain drops begin to, to fall here in the floodplain of Garfield, Texas. So I'm going to get out there in the rain and keep clearing the Amazon rainforest in my backyard while I still can. Be sure to tune in to Collapse Chronicles tomorrow for my interview with nuclear activist Helen Caldicott coming on Collapse Chronicles tomorrow. Bye guys.